I love traveling and you are looking at an economy girl right here. I don't mind economy because I rather spend my money on my actual vacation instead of traveling to vacation. Here are some tips that we use to make our economy flights more enjoyable. First tip, wear loose clothing and bring a lot of layers. So if you're a girl, I recommend just wearing a tank top or something underneath with a built-in bra. It's so comfortable. Who wants underwire and all that stuff? These are the tank tops that I'm usually wearing when I'm filming, but I'm always traveling in these because they have a built-in bra. So these are from Vuori, which is so awesome. Then, you know, just any other layers would be perfect. And then I recommend for any of your outer layers to have something with a zipper. A zipper is really nice because then you can kind of temperature control like let's say you're like trying to sleep and you're like, oh, it's kind of hot. And then you just like unzip it and then you're like, oh, it's kind of cold. Now you just zip it up again. The temperatures in the cabins are either really hot or really cold. So it's really nice to bring layers and make sure they're not too tight. Okay, the next tip, if you don't have smelly feet, is to bring slippers or some kind of slide on shoes. If you have smelly feet, please keep your shoes on. But when you're on a long flight and you're able just to wear slippers around, it is so nice. So slippers, if you don't have smelly feet. Okay, the next tip is wearing compression socks. I literally talk about these so much in my other travel videos and if you've worn compression socks on a flight or a long train ride or a bus ride, you know what I mean. They just make everything so much more comfortable. So also they help regulate your temperature so if you're cold or you need to block in that smelly foot smell, you know, you can just wear the compression sock and your slipper at the same time and then you're good to go. These compression socks are awesome because they're 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury, which is a unit of pressure, and they're really good for casual wear. I wear these every day at work as a physical therapist, and they don't make me itchy, which is a really good plus. All right, the next tip is to bring your own water bottle. You have to bring it empty to the airport, then once you get in the airport, you can then fill it up, but it's just nice to have some water so you can hydrate, and it also helps you go poop. When you're on the plane, the people are walking around with the cart, but sometimes they just give you like that little thing of water and then you're still really thirsty. So having your own water bottle will definitely make you more comfortable. All right, next. Make sure you eat what you normally eat before traveling because you know your digestive system the best. So if you have to eat a particular something before traveling because you know it'll make you poop better, when you poop, you feel a lot more comfortable. So eat what you normally eat. The next tip is taking your vitamins and probiotics if you normally do that. So some of those flights last about 21 hours and then if you miss your probiotics during that time, then usually your digestive system's kind of out of whack. So bring your vitamins and bring your probiotics if you normally take them. All right, the next tip is to limit your salt intake. A lot of the snacks that you see or the meals that you can get like before you're traveling in the airport, a lot of that has high sodium. So if possible, try not to get too salty of a meal. When it's too salty, you're gonna get more dehydrated or some people can get more headaches if it's not what they're usually used to eating. Okay, I do love airplane food and I love the snacks that come on by, but you should bring your own snacks as well, the ones that you enjoy in order to not get hangry. Because sometimes when they're taking a long time to bring the snacks you're like oh, I'm so hungry so just bringing some snacks that you really enjoy is gonna be key these are macro bars we love them so much because they're so delicious so yeah licorice trail mix or whatever usually I have to get some Chester's fries or hot Cheetos because for me it does make me feel better so I love traveling and eating a little bit of junk food so make sure you bring some of your favorite snacks for us whenever we're flying sometimes our tummies could get a little gurgly so we love bringing some ginger chews with us so I do love chimes ginger chews but we got this one from 99 ranch delicious also when the people are coming around with the cart we tend to do the ginger ales just because it's really nice on your stomach sometimes that carbonation just makes you feel so much better. Next tip, eat when they bring you food. Now the people that are feeding you, the really nice people, they're trying to adjust you to the time zone that you are traveling to. So whenever you see food and they're feeding you, try to eat it and it will help you with jet lag. If you are traveling pretty far, try to travel at nighttime so you can get your shower in, you can brush your teeth, wear your pajamas, like your nice comfy pajamas, so then you can have a good night's sleep. So usually when we do this, it really helps us with jet lag. If you're trying to get a good sleep, try to limit your blue light and being on your phone or watch the TV in front of you. Instead, bring a book and read that and it'll make you nice and sleepy. 
If you're someone that has a hard time falling asleep or staying asleep, then when you're booking your flight, if you get an option, try to avoid the back of the plane or the middle of the plane or wherever you think there's going to be a bathroom. At that time, you're going to have the door closing and opening. People are going to be walking by you. So if you're a sensitive sleeper, try to sleep where you think there's not going to be a bathroom. If we're talking about seat strategy and you're someone that likes to stretch out their legs or walk in the aisle, go to the bathroom whenever you want, or you don't want to be interrupted by your sleep, then try to get a seat in the aisle section in the middle section of the plane. So I drew a little graph right here. This is your friendly public service announcement. Bring your own pen as well, just in case you have to do paperwork on the plane. Okay, let's take a look right here. So you usually have, this is the window seat, this is the window seat. This is for those long international flights. You have three here, three here. Don't go for this aisle seat. Go for this one because if this guy right here or this gal right here wants to go potty, they can not go your way and maybe go the other way. So my husband and I, we usually take these two seats right here and then we will just switch off. There you go. Super awesome. Let's say you're just exhausted and you just want to sleep through everything and anything. Well, usually when the people are coming, they're really nice people. They're coming with the food. If your tray's not down, they're gonna tap you and make you eat your food. So what I usually do if I just wanna get some sleep, I'll just put my tray down before I fall asleep. So then they just put the food on my tray and I'm not interrupted. Since we are talking about not getting interrupted when you're trying to sleep, even though I said to wear loose layers, make sure you put your seatbelt on top of your clothes because at this time, when the people are coming down, they're really nice people, when the flight attendant people are coming down and they're trying to check your seatbelts, if you are already sleeping, they're gonna tap you to make sure you are still wearing it. So if you put your seatbelt on over your clothes, you won't be woken up. If you know anything about circadian rhythms, then you know that it's easier to sleep when it's dark. So if you don't have a good blackout eye mask, then I highly recommend you get this one. If you have eyelashes or you don't like things touching your eyes, these eye sockets are really great because they're nice and deep. So you put them on right here. It's super, super soft. Just Velcro it and it's not gonna hit your neck pillow. Also, the cups are removable so you can adjust them if you have a different shaped face than me. Okay, next, really important. If you're trying to get some good sleep and it's so loud and you wanna listen to some music or just have something on noise cancellation, it's really important to have a headset that actually fits with your neck pillow. So we have these guys, which for me doesn't work that well. So instead, I just bring my AirPods Pro and I put it right here. So when I have my neck pillow, it is nice and comfortable. I like using this turtle one because I feel like it is awesome and supportive. When you're traveling on a plane and your battery is about to die on your phone, it super stinks because right when you land, you're probably gonna need your Wi-Fi or your cell service or something just to stay connected if you're going to another country. If you are running out of battery, that super sucks. So make sure you bring the correct cables. Usually when you're in the airport, you can just charge with the cube. That'll go a lot faster. Plus for security reasons, you shouldn't be doing the USB portion in those seats right there in the airport so make sure you have a cable and then also we love anchor a lot I've had this anchor external battery pack for a really long time but yes this is for the phone or like any other electronic and then for us recently I've been doing a lot more YouTube videos so I've been on my computer we actually get computer batteries so these are external batteries just for the computer they're USB-C and they're super fast they'll actually last depending on the power of your laptop it can last like anywhere from from a couple hours to quite a few hours. So yes, these are awesome. I got this one in Japan and I got this one on Amazon. Awesome, awesome. A lot of you probably do this already, but just a nice reminder that you can download movies or you can download shows from Netflix or whatever streaming service that you have, usually. You can also download some of those YouTube videos, the ones that you have on your watch later playlist. So that's one way to keep yourself super entertained. I decided my prop just looks so good. So I'm just drinking my ginger ale, even though I don't have an upset tummy. Mm. If you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you would join the family. So while I'm drinking this ginger ale, you should totally subscribe. I don't know about you, but my mood kind of stinks a little bit if I feel smelly and gross. So one way to really boost your mood is to make sure you stay clean. Now, if your airport that you're traveling to doesn't have a shower for you to go into, like some of those in Asia, then what I highly recommend is getting body wipes that look like this. These are biodegradable body wipes and they're super great. We like getting the single portion packets because they don't dry out. They do have the larger ones, but those ones come with like 14 wipes or 28 wipes. I just need to use a couple when I'm traveling.
All the stuff that I mentioned, I'll be sure to link below just in case you want to give these babies a try. Now this might seem like common sense, but it's surprising how many people don't do this, but make sure you bring a change of clothes in your carry-on and another pair of underwear just to stay fresh. There's something about wearing clean clothes that just makes you feel so good, especially after you've done the body wipe. Now if you are a lady and you want to stay super fresh, usually what you can do is wear a panty liner and that, ooh, I know that's like a word we don't really like to use, panties and moist, gross. But anyways, wear a panty liner and you'll be able to stay fresher longer. All right, something that's really important is to make sure you stay very organized when you are traveling. It's really annoying to go up top to get your carry-on and you're trying to like zip around and try to get all these things. Instead, just pack really, really strategically into your personal item that's underneath the plane seat. So I normally use the Bay's Mini Weekender bag. I do have another video linked right here regarding why this bag is so awesome. But yes, I use this bag and then I also use this one and I put it around my waist. But normally when I'm going onto the plane, I'll stick this Lululemon bag inside my Bay's bag and then we're good to go. But yes, yeah, stay as organized as possible. The more organized you stay, the less your hair gets kind of frazzled, the less little sweats you get on your nose, and in general you just feel a lot better. I'll also link below my free download of a Google Sheets that I made of how to stay more organized during travel. It comes with like a travel research thing and a budget thing, so I'll link that below and that's completely free. I work in healthcare, so I'm a huge advocate on staying clean and making sure your hands stay clean before you're touching your face and putting them on your mouth. And you know, there's lots of people that pick their nose and they touch everything else, or they're going poo-poo, they don't wash their hands, they touch everything. So make sure that you clean your seat, your tray, anything you're touching, the seat belt, the buttons, clean all of that. You can use Clorox wipes, wet ones, whatever, and then just wipe it down and then you're gonna be able to stay healthier longer, hopefully. Also, be sure to bring some hand sanitizer in case you're going to be touching your face or you're going to be eating using your hands. The last thing you would want to do is get sick with maybe some kind of explosive diarrhea and then your trip is not going to be as fun. Speaking of poo poo, a really really good strategy for you to take is after you're done eating, just go to the bathroom right away because most digestive systems of everyone else, all the 200 people in the plane, probably have the same digestive system as you, give or take maybe like 10-15 minutes. So if you go potty first, right Right after you finish eating, then likely when everyone else has to go potty, you already went. Since we're talking about potty time anyways, I just want to say when nature calls, you gotta go. Normally your body kind of gives that natural warning like you gotta poo. If you keep ignoring that natural warning, that stuff just kind of just goes back up. That's what it feels like. So that's how you get constipated during travel. So when nature calls, you just gotta go. Okay, the next tip to survive a long flight in economy is to get up and stretch. Stretch often. I'm a physical therapist, so I'm going to link below a video on some of my favorite stretches that I personally do on a plane, and I actually teach you how to do it. So I'll link that below. You want more deets? I'll give you more deets. Material matters. So if you're trying to stay extra fresh on a plane, then it's really important to try to stick to natural materials such as cotton and linen. Have you ever had a sweat wicking shirt, kind of like this one, where even after after you've washed it in the laundry, it still kind of smells, especially like if you've just worn it for a few minutes. Well, that's because it's made up of polyester and polyester can tend to trap some odor causing bacteria once mixed with sweat. So if possible, try to wear more natural materials such as cotton and linen. This brings me to my next point, and this is for my gal pals, but it's to wear cotton underwear. When you wear cotton underwear, you're able to breathe down there much better than if you were to wear polyester or nylon. So when you're wearing polyester and nylon, there's more moisture that gets trapped down there, and then that could lead to unfavorable itchy happenings, which is not very good. It rhymes with feast deflection. You're about to sit for a very long time, so make sure you let that cookie breathe and wear some cotton underwear. Talking about breathing, this brings me to my next tip, and that is to let the sisters breathe. Under booby sweat is no joke, it's no fun, and if you don't want to wear underwire, then don't wear underwire. These are my favorite bras, these are from Akko, and they're the seamless kinds, but they're really supportive and nice and comfortable. So, if you want to have a nice comfortable bra, I highly recommend Akko. Alright, we're still on clothing, so basically, if you are wearing joggers and they have like a certain type of material, kind of like this kind of material, and it has ankle cuffs right here, if it's a really tight, stiff ankle cuff, when you sit down, those ankle cuffs are going to go up your calves and it's not going to be very comfortable, especially when it starts to dent your skin. So if you are going to wear some pants, make sure you wear a really good ankle cuff 
where it's nice and stretchy so when you sit down and it goes up, it doesn't feel like anything. And compression socks like these are good because they go all the way up your legs. So if you're gonna be wearing ankle cuffs on top of your compression socks, just make sure they're loose ankle cuffs so they don't cause those dents in your skin and undo the job of the compression socks. Okay, if we're talking about pants, I wanna talk about slacks real quick. So if you like to wear slacks like me and you're on a flight, normally I'm wearing joggers, but in general, if you're wearing slacks, when you are taking down your pants, right, most likely your shoe's not big enough to catch all the pants. So some of the pants are going to touch the floor. So if you can, roll up your pant leg before you sit down so then it's not touching the stuff on the bottom of the bathroom floor. And you may think it's water, but it's definitely not water. In the last video, I talked about bringing a change of clothes with you so then you can have something nice to wear or something clean to wear when you feel kind of stinky. So if possible, try to put your clothes in a mesh compression cube. And when it has mesh like this, your clothes are able to breathe more and it's not gonna have that musty smell. Okay, my next tip is to not consume any of the ice or drink any of the water from the plane. You could research this yourself, but it's really interesting to see how seldomly they actually clean those water tanks. So for me, I'll, if I want water, I'll fill up my bottle before in the airport and then bring it with me. I'll just ask for a ginger ale with no ice, please. Okay, talking about hydration, something that you might want to look into is something called liquid IV, just like this. So if you don't know how hydration multipliers work or how osmosis works, then I'll put a screenshot right here. But basically, we love liquid IV because you just pour it into your water and shake it up and it's really light weight and it's awesome. Okay, my next tip has to do with alcohol. If you are going to drink alcohol, make sure you're very hydrated and you're not drinking too much because alcohol can actually dehydrate you and being dehydrated on a plane is not good because you will not be able to go poo poo. You can get a headache and then you're all the way up in the air and you know what? Just stay hydrated. Okay, let's talk about being prepared. My next tip is once you go through security, just find your gate right away so you know where you're going. It's quite stressful if you have very little time to find your gate because you've been trying to find snacks and go to the bathroom beforehand but what you should just do is just immediately find your gate and then go get some snacks so there's nothing better than traveling with peace of mind we want peace of mind and we just want to relax during vacation not you know make it more stressful for ourselves talking about being prepared make sure you get to your gate early because when they start boarding you want to make sure you're there to board early and on time or you know just make sure you're not late because when you're early and on time, you can put your bag, your carry-on item, in the overhead bin above you instead of having to find some random space towards the back of the plane or if they don't have enough space, sometimes they make you actually check in your carry-on bag. So, womp womp. If you are someone that's not very organized or you are packing in a rush and you don't know where any of your stuff is, what you could do is right before you zip up your stuff, just open it back up, open up your personal item, your carry-on, and then your checked bag or whatever, and just make sure you're just taking pictures so you can see what you have on your phone later so you can see, oh yes, I did pack that. If you are someone that wants to be more organized when you're traveling, then take a look in the description below because I'll attach my travel budget and planner Google Sheets and it's a free download for you, basically my gift to you for happy travels. But yes, it's gonna include travel research, budgets, packing lists, to-do lists, and an itinerary for you. My next tip is making sure you have something that you can identify your luggage with easily. So for me, on my carry-on, what I'll normally do is just tie a little ribbon on it so then I know it's mine. So if someone else just happens to have the same bag as me, then they know that the black ribbon bag is probably not theirs because they didn't put the ribbon there. I did. When everyone's luggage is black, then for sure it's much less hassle if you just know which one's yours easily. If we're talking about peace of mind when it comes to luggage, then you know, if you've seen any of my other travel videos, how much I love air tags. So if you can get yourself an air tag, I'll be sure to link my favorite cases below as well. But an air tag is just so awesome because you could just throw it in your bag and you can just scan it to see, oh, did someone walk off with my bag? You could put it in your checked bags, your carry-ons, your personal items. Basically, we just do everything. If you like what you see so far, I would super love it if you would click that subscribe button. Here at Build Your Moxie, I teach you how to be smart with your money so you can enjoy life to the fullest. And that means getting your money in order so you can travel a lot. Nothing is better than traveling debt free and having zero stress when it comes to money. Now that's first class luxury to me. Let's talk about how to stay fresh when you're on a plane. When you're fresh on a plane and you're clean, your mood is just so much better and you are so much more comfortable. Make sure you wash your face before getting on the plane and try not to wear makeup if at all possible. Let your skin breathe. Also, if you're more susceptible to pimple 
couple breakouts, then try not to use the water on the airplane to splash your face because remember, they hardly clean out those tanks. Instead, just wash your face before you fly and then when you land. If you have to do something, then you can always put some micellar water on it, but in general, it's just best just to wait. If you do get oily skin, then make sure you're bringing some oil strips. Okay, the next tip is to make sure to keep your skin hydrated. When you're on an airplane and you have the cabin pressure and the altitude, it's really easy for your skin to dry out, and that includes on your face. So make sure you're hydrating and you're putting moisturizer on. This can prevent you from getting flaky skin or going in the opposite direction and getting oily skin. Also, make sure to keep your lips hydrated and use chapstick. All right, my next tip is to avoid touching your hair and avoid touching your face if possible to prevent future breakouts. So the best thing to do is just to clip up your hair, put it in a little bun. In another video, I talk about my favorite travel items and this clip is in there. The video looks like this, but yeah, keep your hair up. And then if needed, if you get a lot of pimples, wear pimple patches. So this pimple patch, this is if you have like a strip of pimples and then they have just the circle ones and it looks like this. All right, the next tip is if you normally wear a mask on the flight and then your flight is about 20 hours or so, just make sure you're switching out your mask here and there because when you're breathing all that airplane air with your mouth, that can cause some of your skin to get irritated sometimes. Also, another way to avoid lots of bacteria coming from your mouth is just to brush your teeth, but make sure you're using bottled water, not the water from the plane. Random tip, if you are using your phone a lot, just make sure that you wipe it down with some kind of wipe or spray, just because if you're going like this and putting your phone on your face, that can create a breakout later. All right, when it comes to being comfortable when you're traveling on a long flight, nothing makes me feel more comfortable than to make sure I'm clean. So I actually like to take a shower before getting on the airplane, and then once I get to my hotel after I've landed, I'll also take a shower then. If you tend to get smelly pits even after you've showered, then make sure to bring a little stick of deodorant with you. And what you can also do is try it like a little armpit scrub. So this is a charcoal armpit scrub and this is really nice. All right, my next tip is to avoid wearing perfumes. Not only is it more respectful to your neighbors around you who might be allergic, but if you have body odor and you put perfume with it, then you don't smell like perfume. You smell like body odor with perfume. It's just better just to take a shower before going on the plane and then make sure you wear your deodorant. If we're talking about how to be more comfortable on a plane and how to stay fresh, then it's really important that if it's that time of the month to make sure you bring lots of extra lady products. So if you are someone that wears tampons and diva cups or flex cups, then that would be I think it's a little bit more fresh, but if you do need to wear a pad, just make sure you bring a lot of extra pads just to switch them out. And then if they have a moist wipe as well, that would be good. Okay, the next tip is kind of random, but I'm sure some of you have heard this before, but make sure when you're on the airplane that you close the toilet seat cover. When you flush things down, sometimes things get splashed up. So whether it's extra air or extra poo particles or who even knows what kind of vapors go in the air at that time, and call it a theory, but I think that the airplane toilets are really aggressive more aggressive than in your house. I don't want some kind of poo particle rocket to hit me. So if you want to stay fresh, then just close that toilet seat cover. In my last video with the first 27 tips, I talk about these biodegradable body wipes. And I love these ones so much more than just regular baby wipes because with baby wipes, I don't really feel quite clean. I feel like there's like a film on me. So these ones are awesome. What are we wiping down? So it's the four it's. Pits, bits, tits, and slits. You gotta make sure you get those crevasses, okay? Pits, bits, tits, and slits, the four its. All right, we're gonna talk about a lot of random tips and these are just really random. When you are settling into your seat, make sure you're not putting your stuff in those seat pockets in front of you because that's where people put their trash, their Clorox wipes, their booger tissues, kids kick the back of that seat, and there's just a lot of germs that are in that area. So if you're someone that likes to put a book there or a tablet, or some kind of laptop there, you just wanna make sure that you line that seat pocket with a trash bag if possible. Okay, next tip. If you're someone that tends to lose your AirPods because maybe your ears don't keep them in that well, in general, I like to just put it on noise cancellation and it stays in my ears more. I don't like wearing those big headphones because it doesn't work with my travel pillow. So if you're someone that likes to wear AirPods like me but it keeps falling out of your ears, then just put on a little headband and that's gonna help keep your AirPods in your ears and it'll prevent them from falling out 
when you're sleeping. If you're someone that gets really antsy and really tight whenever you're sitting down for a long time and even standing up and doing ankle pumps and stretching is not that helpful, then I highly recommend taking a look at the Tiger Tail Muscle Roller and the Massage Ball. So I've talked about these two items in a lot of my other travel videos, but just in general, these make a big difference. I'm a physical therapist and this is exactly what we're using in the clinic. But yeah, when your muscles are really tight, sometimes it's just really nice to roll things out and you're way more comfortable after. As a physical therapist, I work a lot with the sedentary population or some population that have just had surgery. And some of the most important things I tell them is just to pump their ankles because it does help with blood circulation. So you're gonna take your ankle and literally go like that. So do a ton of ankle pumps as much as you can throughout the flight, get up, Go up on your tippy toes, make sure you're just getting that blood pumping and that'll make you feel a lot more comfortable. When you're on a flight, sometimes it can get really cold or it can get really hot. So if you're someone that overheats easily, like for me, I, I'm really active so I do sweat a lot, just make sure that you bring yourself a little portable fan. So this is one of my favorite fans. It looks like it's going slow because the camera can't keep up, but it's actually going really fast. But yes, this is one of my favorite portable fans. It looks like this and I can just hang it on the side of my bag or I can just keep it inside my fanny pack. Okay, the next tip is to just make sure you're nice to the flight attendants. They really are nice people. They're there to help everyone out. And I actually find that the nicer we are to the flight attendants, they do really give you better service. Not because it's a tip for tat type of thing, but in general, when someone's nice to you, you're just nice back. If you are being nice to them and you feel like they're not being nice back, then just in general, count it as a win because you were nice to someone that day. Also, comment below if you've had a better experience on a flight because you were being nice to a flight attendant. If you're someone that likes traveling, then take a look at these videos that I'll link right here.